This is a free sample of the book, Don't Be Sympathetic, by Cairo Copeland. The first half of this book is posted right here on YouTube, free for everyone to listen to. If you like this content and want to hear or read the rest, or want to listen to it free of ads, visit reinventideal.com slash simp. The book is available on Kindle, paperback, and audible at reinventideal.com slash simp. Chapter 2. Why you can't blame women for encouraging simphood. When a politician you really don't like is elected president, who do you blame when they start enacting policies you despise? The politician? You should not. If his policies really are legitimately bad and will harm the nation, then those who voted for him are absolute fools who have voted for self-harm. That's who you should be angry at. When I was working in financial services, particularly with high net worth clients, I was yelled at, called names, and given a piss bucket to hold by these clients. They legitimately thought everyone should bow to their will and do as they please just because they were rich. Should I be mad at them? Who's more responsible for their behavior? The asshole clients or the company I work for that excused their asshole behavior and encouraged them to do it more often? When you catch your wife red-handedly having an affair, who are you mad at and want to beat up? The man she slept with or she who chose to sleep with him? Which of the two definitely had full knowledge of precisely what they were doing? Many guys in this scenario would say, I'll kill that man. And that is the simp within saying that. Because the man was just doing what men do, taking every opportunity possible to get laid. But the woman was knowingly stabbing you in the back. In the same way, we cannot blame or direct our rage toward women when it comes to the prevalence of simps. Sure, it's agitating to watch e make a fortune from selling pictures of themselves online while you work your ass off at a real job. But if you had the opportunity to make easy money in a similar way, wouldn't you? Imagine we had the supposed perfect society where everyone behaved themselves, or so we thought. As a result, no one locked their doors nor secured their prized possessions. No one took more than they needed, nor took advantage of anyone else. It was a completely free market ruling the economy and every libertarian's wet dream. It only takes one person to fuck it up. While you may continue to act morally, if you learned that there was one other actor in the marketplace that cheated people, lied, stole, and got away with it, laughing all the way to the bank, you'd at least be curious at how they were making such an easy living. And that first look to peer into what the wicked do is often all that's needed to inspire the seeds of sin. In the movie Office Space, a jaded corporate America worker bee found a way to steal from the company he worked for in a manner that no one would notice. He created a computer bug that would steal from customer accounts one small fraction of a cent at a time. The theft was so small, an auditor wouldn't see it even if they were looking for it, because there were so many customer accounts. The fractions of the pennies added up to millions of dollars fast. It was the perfect crime with an easy getaway. If you had the chance to do this, wouldn't you? No matter how righteous or pure of heart you push yourself to be, your mind will do an incredible job of coming up with rationalizations as to why you deserve the reward of that crime. In those rationalizations, you are most honest with yourself. Righteousness itself is a contrivance. But sin is always sincere. Back in 2010, I remember a news story about a gas station that experienced a glitch that caused the price of gasoline at the pump to fall from charging $3 a gallon to $0.30 cents a gallon. There were lines around the block at this gas station filling up. The owner-operator of it was scrambling to fix the air, but not before he had lost $275,000 that day. Even while hearing his side of the story and sympathizing with him, I know for a fact I would have been one of the jerks that took advantage of his misfortune. Because I'd been paying $3 a gallon for so long. It's such an outrageous, irrational price set by criminal cartels in the oil business. I felt justified in taking the relief. Your mind plays an evil trick on you in these scenarios. When others are stealing and getting away with it, you feel you must follow suit. 
because you're a sucker if you don't. You fall behind the competition that we perceive life to be, the never-ending pissing contest between you and the Joneses. You must take advantage of every shortcut you find along the way, is what you're led to believe. This is how it works in the minds of the women that take advantage of the simps. When they put up their sexy pictures and videos on OnlyFans, ManyVids, Patreon, and Premium Snap, raking in thousands of dollars each month. The same can be said when they charge $5 a minute on Chatterbait, where the patrons are often poor. You may wonder how these women could sleep at night knowing they're exploiting such mentally and emotionally undisciplined males. In my coaching practice, I've seen some simps drop and deplete 90% of their entire net worth, one as high as seven figures, with their simping behavior. While the exploitation is horrible, the question is not who would treat someone else this way. The right question is who would allow themselves to be treated this way. Women only treat men in the manner that we allow them to. That is why simping must be stopped. We cannot blame the queen of fools for thinking herself to be a queen. Rather, we must seek to cure the fools that made her queen. Similarly, many girls have no malicious nor manipulative intent. They legitimately think that some guys are just plain nice guys that truly want to be nothing more than friends. If these nice guys wanted anything more, they'd go for it or be vocal about it, the girls think. But when someone spends so much time attempting to be your best friend, then months or years later, they drop the bombshell that they love you romantically. What would you be? You'd be shocked and gasp at the fact that they had a hidden agenda the whole time. My own girlfriend at the time of this writing had such a revelation while on a beach day with me. Her phone kept buzzing. One of her guy friends, really though, male girlfriends we should say, kept texting her. I said something like, you sure are popular today. She responded by saying, it's my friend Clint from Acro Yoga. We're looking for a new jam. You know he wants to be more than friends, right? I said, no, he doesn't. We've been friends for years. He's not like that, she said. He is, and I'll prove it, I responded. Text him right now, saying, you really need to get laid. It's been a while. She took my instruction, and within two seconds, he texted back, where are you right now? I could tell from her gasp and expressions how deep in shock she was. Women really are as naive and ditzy as they're portrayed. This guy had a crush on her all those years. They were friends, and she never knew it. That's because he kept it under a tight lid all these years. That was the problem with Percy. He concealed his true interest. And that's what's wrong with simping altogether. Simping is wrong and immoral because it's dishonest at its core. Someone tell this to the asswipe that wrote the article saying, Stop calling men who respect women simps. Percy thought that if he were gentlemanly and respectful to Angie enough, she'd one day open her eyes to how wonderful he is and magically fall in love with him. But women are not logical in their decisions of mate selection. And even when they are deeply aroused and in love with a man, it is rare they'd ever make a move. That's your job. Many guys don't know that. Instead, they keep holding out, patiently waiting and establishing a real estate empire in the friend zone. They hold the purse and foot the bills to get nothing in return. The women will pick from this low-hanging fruit for as long as the tree produces it. Don't be this guy. Continue, and we shall correct this behavior.